So today, this morning session, we're going to discover the wonderful world of the honey bee worker. So I have a beautiful photo here that uh, we were allowed to use by photographer Michael Fassel. I'm going to write his name here. And always we need to uh, give credit to our photographers for letting us use their beautiful photographs. And as always, we have these tools. We have a graphite pencil. I have a 2B pencil that I really like. And then I have a light blue. Um, any, any light blue would do. But if you have the non-photo blue, awesome. If not, any light blue will work. I also have my eraser. It's a little bit dirty on the edges, so I will have to remember to clean it a little bit like this before I erase. Otherwise, I'm going to smudge my page. And then I have my sharpener. So I'm all ready. Are you ready? Wonderful. I'm going to put this here so you can see the bee, but at the same time, you can see my drawing. So we're going to start. These are amazing. Bees are insects and they have head. They have thorax and they have abdomen. So let's start our bee. I'm going to start with my head and we're going to start with a circle. And remember that we use our non photo blue just to do like an x ray view of the bee. Uh, later with the graphite, we will add detail. So this is just a placeholder. This is where our head is going to be. Then we're going to do another circle, but it's more like an oval. And look, it's a very interesting oval. It's a little bit wider here and a little bit narrower there. That's going to be our thorax. And then once we have a circle for the head, a kind of oval for the thorax, we're going to do a big oval. And this big oval is going to be, guess what? The abdomen. I'm going to spell this for you. And this, this oval ends in a pointy bit, but I'm not adding detail now. I'm just doing these three shapes. So I'm going to go a little bit over them. So we are on the same page. This is one circle for the head. And I'm going to start writing it now. This is our head. This other circle that overlaps, because remember, this is our blueprint. This is for the thorax. And it's spelled with an H and with an X, thorax. It looks like a superhero name. And then one oval for the last part that is called the abdomen. A-B-D, abdomen. I was worried I would misspell it. <laughs> so are we doing good? Yeah, are we ready to go? Awesome. Because guess what? Bees have how many eyes do you think bees have? Ah, if you if you can, just do a guess in the chat and see how many how many eyes do bees have. Can you make a guess? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, someone has their their. Uh, yes, Joshiah, uh, would you like to? Are you are you doing okay? Or oh, you would like to answer? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, that's true. Um, they have more than one. They have. Guess what? five eyes and you're going to be like what where I can't that's not possible well let's do first one big eye this is going to be our big eye and notice how I changed to my graphite because I just have the main structure so I'm just going to start adding parts seven was a very good guess and two was a very good guess too so one eye because this is a profile view when you look at yourself in the mirror you're looking in the front view but we're looking at the bee from the side. So it has one eye on each side. That side we don't see is kind of hidden. So this is going to be the head. And I'm not necessarily following the blueprint now. I'm using it as a model because this is how my head looks like, the head of the bee. This is our head. And then on top of the head, right here, if we were to look there from the top, they have three eyes and they're not called eyes. They're called ocelli. It's really cool. I'm going to spell it here. These are the ocelli and these eyes that are here on the top. 
this allows them to see where is the sun. Imagine having eyes on the top of the head to tell you where is the sun. So those two big eyes, the two big eyes are just co called compound eyes. And they're compound because they have tons of eyes. Can you believe it? Um, do you see what I'm doing? I'm making lines that are curvy. I'm going to repeat that here so you can see it well. I'm making curvy lines that are parallel inside the eye and then curvy eyes that go from the top to the bottom. And suddenly I have a compound eye. So each, each square has even more eyes and tiny, tiny, tiny eyes. So that's why it's called a compound eye. So in total, if we have three ocelli, 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 and two compound eyes, in total, five eyes. Isn't it amazing? So on the head, we're also going to have other structures. We're going to have these tiny mandibules in the front. And these tiny mandibules allows them to, to pick, pick things, search. Hmm, is this flower good? Ooh, I want to eat that. We're going to have another part here that I'm going to leave for the end, but let's gonna continue with the thorax. So the thorax starts here. And I'm following the blueprint quite well, actually, for the thorax. In the lower part, I'm going to change to my blue so I can add where the legs are going to come out of. The legs in an insect come from the thorax. And one is a little bit closer. I'm going to change to this that is a little bit darker blue. One comes closer to the head. And the other ones come closer to the end of the thorax. And legs in insects are amazing. So I'm going to start with the one in the back. And so I don't cover my hand. And then we're going to the one in the front. So the first structure here is how it attaches. It has like a triangle shape. So we're going to draw a triangle with a little round edge. And then from the tiny edge, we're going to draw another triangle. Are we good? Is everybody doing well? Wonderful. So we have a tiny triangle, another triangle, and then a triangle, but it's the other way around. The long edge is touching the, do you see what I mean? Like this um, vertex, vertice is here, and this other triangle vertice is going to be here. So we have two triangles that are meeting in the middle. Can you slow down? Absolutely. Selena, thank you so much for letting me know. I'll go back a little bit and I hope, I hope we can all catch up. Thank you for letting me know. Sometimes I get so excited. So we have the legs come from the thorax. So I just draw a circle from which all the, the each leg is going to come out. So we have one here, one here, and one here. And I'm going to start drawing the leg, the third leg, starting from the back. So I just made a triangle with the vertex, the vertice here, and this edge a little bit rounder. And then I made another triangle. And then I made another triangle. And now I'm going to add a little rectangle. And then my fun part, the most fun, the, my favorite part, the two, the three triangles, tiny, one, two, and three. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here so you can see it. One, oops, my, oh my goodness, my blue. One, ah, I'll need to use the other one. One, two, and three. That's what I'm doing here. And at the end, they have a very interesting triangle with two claws. 
So I'm going to switch to graphite so you can see that this is just our skeleton. Once I use the graphite, you're going to see how this is starting to look like a leg. So I'm going to go over this triangle and sometimes I'm going to follow the blueprint and sometimes I'm going to add some edges. Did you see what I did? Because all of these parts are like your legs and mine. They are connected through joints and they bend on each of these points. So I'm just connecting all these bits and pieces, the upper leg, the lower leg. And when we come here, it's just a tiny, tiny rectangle and my favorite part, the triangle, triangle and triangle. And finally, the claws. So we have all these is the foot and it has three triangles and another triangle that is a little bit curvy. And at the end, look at that, the claws. That is cool because that's what allows them to actually craft to all the plants and all the leaves. So shall we do this again? Because we have three more and we have two more legs to go. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this leg now is looking the other way. So I'm going to, if you want me to use the blue, I can use the blue first. So for example, I'm going to start with my triangle with my first big triangle, my second triangle, and then my rectangle, my three little triangles that in this case are going to be starting to bend forward. And finally, the triangle with the claws. Oh yeah. I'm going to go with my graphite and do again my first piece. Dad, if you want to know the names, I can tell you the names because they are exactly like our bones. Because this is our femur. <laughs> we have a femur. That's the long, long bone that we have in our upper leg. And guess what? She has, she has a femur too, but these are different insects. They don't have uh, skeletons like we do, but they're called um, the same way, femur. Then we have the other triangle. See how I'm doing? I'm rounding the edges. That's the tibia. And that's one of the two bones that we have in our lower legs. It's called the tibia as well. Then we're going to do our little rectangle. And then my favorite part, the three triangles. One, two, and three. With this last one that is a little bit curvier with the claws. There we go. How is your bee looking like? I'm sure it's looking amazing. So let me know if you want me to go over these two legs again, but we're going to do the exact, exact, exact same thing on the front leg. Are we ready? Okay, let's go. I'm going to use the blue. Let's see. I'm going to use my first triangle as we did before. My second triangle. And as you notice, as we go into the front, they're starting to be a little bit tinier tinier, tinier triangles, tinier, tinier, tinier. And actually, these are bent much more forward because I think she is touching the leaf a little bit, the flower. So I'm going to make her um, with her leg like this. And then the two claws. So I'm going to go with my graphite on top of it. There we go. My first triangle, my tibia, and I'm rounding all the edges, all the edges of my triangle. So they look less triangle, 
and more like organic because in nature things are very very round my little rectangle and then you know my favorite part right <laughs> maybe you have a different favorite part of the bee this is definitely my favorite the three triangles with the claws so those are the those are three out of six because the bee is an insect and insects have six legs so these are the three on this side. On the other side, there would be another three legs, but we're not going to worry about them because otherwise it's going to get too crowded. But one thing that we need to do is add our wings. So I am going to start with a circle here. That's where the wings anchor. They're not in the abdomen. As you notice, the abdomen has nothing attached to it. Not the legs, not the wings. So here, um, we're going to see here in this photo how the wing comes from here to the very back. And then you see there is another wing in the back here. So I'm going to start with the front one with a big, big ellipse with a round shape. I need totally overlaps a little bit of the thorax and a little bit of the abdomen. But I'm okay with that because wings are transparent. As you can see, we can see through them. And all these little divisions, they're called veins. Isn't that fun? They have veins, they have tibia, femur, all the names that we already have for our own anatomy as, as, as humans. So let's do that wing that we see in the background. But because it's on the other side, we are not going to see this, but I'm going to use it as an anchor to the other wing. Just to, as a placeholder. There we go. So we just made one big oval for the wing and one big oval for the other wing. So I'm going to come with my graphite and I'm just going to make the wing. And the wing. This is one of two wings because each side has one wing. The wing that we can see now, that is called the four wing. And there are two of them, one here and one there. Let's draw that one as well. This is what I said before. I'm not going to draw maybe because it's transparent just like that, but I'm not going to see where it joins the abdomen, uh, sorry, the thorax. So those are the four wings, these and these. And there's another, another set of wings, but now they're uh, folded like this. So they're on the back. We don't see them until they start flying. And they're going to be right here. And I'm just going to Make sure I add the little back wings. And oh my goodness, have you seen how complicated that looks? All these veins. Mm, I'm just going to make a few, a few lines, no more than that. I'm just going to make a line inside and a line. And I'm just going to make a line that is curvy inside and I'm just going to connect it. So what I'm doing, I'm going to put it here so you can see it. If this is the wing, I'm just making one curvy line, like a big M, and then connecting the middle. And then I'm just going to join all these lines a little bit a little bit so I can have a little bit of veins, but oh my, that's too difficult. I would need more than one hour to draw that. And I think that's good enough. I think with that, we can suggest wing. How are we doing? Are we doing well? One thing that I really, really like is how the abdomen joins the thorax because now we drew just an, uh, like an oval, but in reality, 
there is a tiny, 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 tiny tube that connects it. So in real life, it's joined by a tiny, tiny, tiny tube. So the bee, the bee's abdomen is connected to the thorax by these tiny, tiny joint. And you know what? When you see other insects, sometimes that is so long. I've seen insects that have that joint so long that it looks like it's going to break. But in the bees, it's not that long. And because bees are so hairy, it's so hard to see, even in the photo. So I'm going to add some detail on the abdomen because do you see how it has like sections? So for that, I'm going to make curves on one end. And from each curve, I'm going to make a slime that is curvy. Do you see what I did? I first did some curvy lines. Then I joined these curvy lines. And that way, we suddenly have turned our oval into a beautiful abdomen. Isn't that beautiful? I'm sure yours is looking amazing. If you think that this space is too big, we can add another one here. And the funny thing is that from each, you know, uh, the, from each of these segments, there's a lot of hair. There's a lot of hair coming. So I'm just gonna start adding some hair, doing M, 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 M. There's so much hair, so much hair everywhere. They're so hairy. I didn't know that. M, 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 M. Look at all the hair. I like using M's for hair. M, 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 M. How are we doing? How is your day looking like? Oh my goodness, I'm sure that if when you're done, if you send the photo to the Richmond Nature House, they're gonna love it. Absolutely love it. I'm gonna add a little bit of hair on the top because look at all the hair. Look how fluffy she is. So I think I'm gonna M, 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 M. You can add hair on top. So I'm gonna maybe erase a little bit of the uh, thorax so I can put hair here and also hair here. Oh my goodness, so hairy. Hair, hair, hair everywhere. Even here, oh my goodness. There's so many interesting things about the bees. I was finding um, when I was doing research that they have two antennas and we're gonna draw them now. I think I'm gonna raise the uh, ocelli and I'm gonna draw them here instead. So I have room for the antennas. You cannot believe how interesting the antennas are. So they start with a tiny square and then they are articulated. So they have, imagine that my finger is the antenna. They can bend like this. Oh, that's amazing. So I'm going to draw my antenna bent like this. And I know I'm going over my drawing, so that's why I have my eraser. And hopefully yours is a little bit cleaner than mine. <laughs> so it doesn't smudge. So that's my antenna. And oh, antennas are cool because they allow them to search. In the photo, you see what the antenna is doing? It's testing. Mm, is this a good flower? Oh, I want to test that flower. And I'm going to draw a little bit of hair because she has so much hair. There we go. So when a bee finds a flower, like in the photo, how is she going to get all the nectar? How is she going to get all what the flower? Look at this beautiful, beautiful flower. It's a clover. So when the bee finds a flower that she likes, there is a thing in the mouth, a structure that is called the proboscis. 
pro proboscis. And the proboscis is like a straw. And guess what? The proboscis is this triangle that comes from here and allows them to get inside the flower so they can get all the nectar, all the nectar. So let's draw a flower, shall we? I'm just going to draw uh, this little flower here just to get an idea of this bee catching all the nectar from the flower. So I'm just going to draw a little flower. Yours can have petals like this, but mine is going to have these pointy, pointy, pointy petals. I didn't know that clovers had looking up close all these tiny flowers. Look at all the flowers of these of these um, clover. Some are open and some are closed. So I guess this bee is not going to wait for that one to open. It's going to be like, uh uh, that's open. That's for me. So I'm going to erase a little bit of the tip of the proboscis because guess what? The straw is inside. And when you put a straw in your drink and when you're drinking water or orange juice or what you like, you can see that the straw goes inside. So let's see, I'm going to draw just the tip as if it was inside. <laughs> That's kind of a trick. So imagine that this bee has a straw and she's drinking her favorite nectar from her favorite glass. So we will see the end right there. I'm going to put some lines on my straw, <laughs> but the proboscis doesn't have those lines. It's just to compare. So we have the antenna, we have the ocelli, we have our head, the thorax, the abdomen. Guess what bees do when they eat all this nectar? They process it. They have two different, two different stomach. And one is for eating and the other one is for collecting. So they need to eat as well, but they also need to bring all this nectar back into the colony. And do you know what the name of the colony is for, for bees? It looks a little bit like this. I'm going to give you a tip. It looks a little bit like this with hexagons. Hexagons are shapes that have six edges. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And when you look at them, they look like that. Well, the name of this is a honeycomb. So when they collect all the nectar, they bring it back to the honeycomb. And they put it there. So let's put all the nectar here. That's our nectar. But also, Guess what they bring back? They bring back all the pollen from flower to flower. I'm going to draw a little bit of more flowers here, just, just on the background. So we know that she's sitting somewhere. <laughs> she's not floating into space. They bring all the nectar that they have collected. They bring all the pollen. So this is nectar. This is pollen, but also guess what else they keep inside the honeycomb? They keep their babies. They keep the tiny babies all in there. So all the things that are important are in the honeycomb and also water. And guess what? Honeycombs are so, so, so super duper strong that the engineers, when they build planes, they use this structure. I'm just going to draw a plane here. So I remember because these structures are so 
so, so strong that engineers are like, how are we going to build the strongest, the strongest planes? So they look at the honeycombs. Can you imagine? That's incredible. I think I'm ready to add a little bit of color. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm ready to add a little bit of color. Uh, I'm also going to add a little title because I always like to have fun with my titles. So while you catch up with all what we have gone through and you can ask me questions, uh, I'm going to just put here. Um, oh, I was going to write honey, <laughs> but that's their name, honey bee. Honey. There's so many interesting things. They're the, the biggest pollinators and they're so important. So important. We need to take care of the bees because that's what makes all the flowers pollinate and your community gardens. That's why they, they blossom with flowers and that's how we get our, our fruits and veggies. It's thanks to the bees mostly. There are many, many, many other pollinators, but the bees are very, very important. Honey bee, and I have to add two bees, bee. My name is Bea, but some people call me bee. And I like it. <laughs> I, I feel like a bee. <laughs> so this is our title. If you want to copy it, you totally can, but you can have fun with it as well. And there's another thing that I wanted to uh, write about uh, the bees is that they, um, they can, in this, in this colony, the honeycombs, they are 60,000 bees on each. Can you imagine? all those neighbors. Imagine that you have 60,000 neighbors. And what we said is that they are vital pollinators. We need to take care of the bees. So I'm going to start adding some color and I'm going to move this a little bit so we can have the colors here. I'm going to start adding a little bit of yellow in the hair because this is a very, very hairy bee, very hairy bee. And I'm just, um, one thing I always do when I start coloring, sometimes I change the way I hold my pencil. Because for example, if I want to color here, I can create a very uniform color. If I want to color things that are a little bit more detailed, I go back to holding my pencil like this. For example, all these, blonde, golden looking hairs. Those are going to be, I think, this color. I can see that um, everybody's super focused. So I will continue adding some color. And if you want me to repeat anything that we've done so far, uh, so you can finish your, your drawing in time, let me know because I'm, I'm here to help you. I am totally here to help. So I'm going to add all this hair that comes from the different segments of the abdomen. I'm going to color them like this. You can certainly color your bee purple if you want. That's absolutely fine. There we go. So I'm going to add a little bit of more hair here. M -m -m, M -m -m, M -m -m. So that's my hairy, hairy bee. Oh, one thing that is super important. How do they carry the pollen? Guess what? Here in the back legs, there's a special room, special room. And if you look at bees up close, you can see that they have like sacks and these sacks are very yellow. And those, you guess right, those sacks are called pollen sacks. So they carry nectar inside, but they also collect the pollen here. And because they stepped on every single flower that they can see, they inadvertently drop sometimes a little bit here and there. So that's why they're pollinators. 
because they sometimes drop a little bit of crumbs, <laughs> crumbs of pollen into the flowers. So that's why they pollinate. They don't keep it all to themselves. So those are the pollen sacs and it's such an important, important part of, of the role that the bees play. And then I think I'm gonna use a brown and look at how tiny my colors are. I'm sure the colors that you use the most are also getting tinier. I'm just gonna add a little bit of brown, but I'm gonna start very, very light. Don't go too dark too soon. So you can add a little bit of dark and because the wing is transparent, I'm just gonna, oops, that doesn't have anything. There we go. Also the thorax, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown, but I also wanna leave some space for these beautiful highlights. So there's some areas that I'm gonna leave uncolored. And you can mix colors. You see, if I want to see what these two colors do, I can color here a little bit. And then I can see, oh, what would happen if I add this color? Oh, yeah, I like it. So I can do that on my drawing. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of shadow on this part of the abdomen by pressing a little bit harder with my color pencil. And it's the same color pencil, but by pressing a little bit harder, suddenly I have two different colors. Isn't that amazing? I'm gonna press a little bit harder as well, just because the little hairs are on top and they might be creating a little bit of shadow. There we go. One thing that people sometimes are afraid of bees because they think they can sting them. And guess what? There is a sting, yes, it's right there. That's where the sting is, but bees do not sting unless they feel very stressed out and they feel endangered. So bees are very, very, um, very nice insects that don't bother anybody. And if you see a hive in the park, you have to, um, yeah, you have to just let them be, let them do their own job because they work very, very hard. And they, all they do is good for them and for us and for the planet. For the legs, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of brown at the beginning and then I'm gonna use a little bit of blue. But if you see the image, the top is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna leave that area, not, not color, because I want to have that nice, nice, nice effect. So that area, I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter. And that's because the sun is hitting. So when things are hit by the sun, for example, imagine my light is the sun. So the areas that are hit by the light, like my thumb, are that color, but the areas like my wrist, that's darker. You see, it's the same skin. So you can uh, see objects that are the same color, but they look like they have different colors, but just because of the how the light is, is hitting. So that's something you can really, really, really look when you go out and take a walk in the garden. So I'm just going to Go over is 1041, so we're doing very well. And then I'm going to go a little bit darker in the points, in the joints where these uh, legs meet. My favorite part is this claws. They're called tarsal claws. And this all is part of the foot. So I'm just going to draw here a foot. Let's see if I can draw a human foot with fingers. So it's the same. Now I'm going to just add some color. There we go. So isn't that amazing that they have the same name and they look so different? Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. And one thing I was reading as well about the bees is that they, they can fly 
I'm going to write that here because it's so cool. At 24 kilometers an hour. That's very fast. I think, uh, yeah, I think a person can run maybe nine kilometers an hour, unless you're like an Olympian and you're competing for the gold medal of speed. But that's very, 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 very fast. Sometimes they like to take naps on the flowers. So if you see a bee that is taking a nap on a flower, it's because she's tired. Wouldn't you be tired if you were flying all day, collecting nectar from flower to flower? Just adding some color on the head and a little bit darker at the bottom going to color the mandibules and you can color them in different colors eh? you don't have to but I think I think this might be closer to what you find in nature I'm sure there's a purple bee somewhere I haven't seen it yet I hope I hope you can see it one day I haven't and then the antenna there we go and as I said I think I'm going to use a little bit of blue on top yeah, I like how that looks. Oh, yes, I like mixed colors. It's so, so, so interesting. And then the proboscis. Hmm, I think I'm going to use a little bit of uh, purple or maybe red because it's not always out there. This straw, it's only out there when they find a flower that they really, really like. And when they find a flower that they really, really, really like, they dance, they do a dance. And why is the dance? Well, they want to tell the other bees where, where the flower is. And they want to tell them, hey girls, come here because I found this awesome flower and we can bring all this awesome nectar to our colony, to our honeycomb. So they dance. Can you imagine? I need to write that down here. They dance. And I'm going to put some music notes. I'm sure they don't play any instrument, but that is super fun. So I'm just going to add more dark areas. And as you see, the way I'm coloring the eye, I'm leaving a little bit of uncolored area here. like sort of white but without using white because I, I think it looks very nice when the sun hits to leave an area that has a highlight like in here you see so I'm just going over the abdomen and the you know here you see in the photo that the um, the wings are almost transparent so I might just go with the brown and go around the edges and this is a little bit darker here. So I'll just go around my wings with the brown. But that's pretty much it. I don't think I want to add anything really. If anything, because they're transparent, I might add some color here because we would still see through a little bit. And I might add, hmm, let's see where there is more hair. Oh my goodness, they have more hair coming from the legs. Oh my gosh. So I might add some legs, uh, some hair on the legs directly with the color because they're very, 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 very hairy. Oh, thank you, Evelyn. I'm very glad that you are enjoying this. I hope you're having fun. I, I hope I'm not going too fast. Let's see. And I'm going to post the link of the next session because we're going to talk about another pollinator, in this case, the butterflies. Such interesting, interesting world of tiny, tiny, tiny creatures. I think I like to have fun with the titles and maybe use the same colors that I use on my drawing or my main 
better. So that's my honey bee. I'm gonna color the, the nectar. Mm, let's see, I'm gonna use mm, maybe this, but a little bit lighter. And I want to make sure that in the honeycomb, I'm gonna sure I'm gonna make sure the water is blue and the pollen, the foam color I use for the pollen sacks. And then the nectar, I also use the same color. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of color into the flowers because I like this flower very much. Look, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I didn't know that when I look at one of these clovers, I never noticed that they had tiny flowers inside. So I need to look closer next time I go out. So I'm gonna start adding a little bit of purple. If you notice, the very end of the flower is darker. And as it goes into the very bottom, it becomes green. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start purpley at the top. And then as it goes down, I can change to green and I can start here at the bottom with the green. And I don't worry if I go on top of the proboscis because it, after all, it's inside. So then, I have suddenly made a flower that goes from purple into green. Let's do another one just in case, because I don't want you to miss that. So I started, let's choose this one, for example. I started by, I, I'm starting at the top where the purple color is, and I go a little bit harder on the very tips of the top of the flower. And then I go very, very, very soft. And I don't go to the very, very bottom, just up to here, more or less. And then with the green, I do the opposite. I start here at the bottom and always start very light. And then I start overlapping, not all of it up to there. And then I can go a little bit darker. And now we have another, another of these beautiful, beautiful clover flowers. And you know what? Because we don't want the poor bee to be standing in the nothingness. We're gonna, I'm gonna just suggest more of these. More like do to do, do to do, and add a little bit of green. So at least it looks like it is. Because if we were to look at this from the distance, and this is this is very funny. Um, I'm gonna do it here at the corner. If we were gonna look at this from the distance, what we would see is this, a tiny, tiny bee on this clover in the middle of a field. So imagine all the things that we have missed when we are walking around, if we don't stop and look closer. That's our tiny bee and the clover. And only when we look closer, only when we look closer, we get to see all the bits and pieces. So <laughs> that is very tiny. So I'm just going to do an arrow because from here we went here. And isn't that indicate like from tiny we went to big. I really like all these pollen sacks. I really, really like them. So it's now 1051. I'm going to put this here so you can see it well. It's 1051 and we're going to start at 11 with the butterflies. So I'm going to copy the link so you can actually, if you didn't receive it, you have it. And I'm also, so don't click yet, but that's the link. Uh, if you want to um, select, copy and save, uh, and then there's another link I want to share because I made a website to put all this recording and other projects that I've been doing 
from home thanks to Richmond Cares, Richmond Gives. I made a website when I'm putting all the cool projects I've done over the winter. So that's the website. It's called Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. And it will have these recordings as well. And it already has the bat, the Canada goose, the chickadee. Um, we also did the grizzly bear. So just make sure that if you want to see these recordings again, you go there and you can watch them. And it's always free, always free thing, thanks to, to very, very generous sponsors. And the more we learn about nature, the more, you know, we take care of it. It's, it's home to so many little, little beautiful creatures. <laughs>